What's up, YouTube fam? So, I actually ended up selling the Prelude a little while back here. And I'm going to move on to a domestic car. I have an old, or you'll see what I have. And I think it'll be a, a little more interesting build, something that's a little more powerful, a little more up my alley. And I think um, it'll be a great project now that I have built the Prelude. I got some painting experience, some fabrication experience, and, and all that good stuff. So look forward to some different videos. I thought I'd just preface this one. All right, what's good, everyone? So took a little break from these Prelude videos. Um, you know, I put a lot of work into this thing and kind of felt like I deserved a break. So now I recently purchased a bunch of stereo equipment for this thing. So I'm going to show you guys how to throw um, speakers. I'm making a, um, or I'm putting subwoofers in this subwoofer box over here and putting a head unit in and installing, you know, kind of like an installation kit. So I'll show you guys kind of the process there. And it's super beneficial to know because lots of cars need stereos and it's always... Um, you know, you don't really want to go to car toys in my opinion, because in my opinion, they don't do great work and they definitely are super overpriced. I went in there recently to try and get some of this stereo equipment and was not happy with what the guy was showing me. So yeah, I kind of, or I tore out the old one. You can see I can already have this converter in there. So you want to make sure to buy the correct converter for your car, right? There's always a little, um, plug in there and then you get this converter that allows you to tap into the old wiring right there's already wires for the old speakers in the front and back and then it has a hot wire ground um, you know provisions for the speakers and then you just kind of you just kind of splice it in there so yeah I'll kind of I'll make a little list of parts that I bought and show you guys you know just kind of the order so you can kind of get a rough idea of what I did because it's worked for me in the past so hopefully it works for me on this guy all right so just going over this order so basically what you're gonna do is order a single din you know car stereo um, and I, what I did is just got the one with Bluetooth because I don't need a CD player I don't know I feel like that's kind of a thing in the past and then what I did is look on the forums for what kind of speakers you know you want to buy preliminarily and on the Prelude, it's a 6x9 in the rear, and then the door speakers. I'll go to the next slide. I really like Pioneer as well. And I like to, if you're going to go with a certain brand, I, I like to go, you know, do the whole stereo with the same brand. So you're not, you know, going Pioneer and then Kenwood. And I, I feel like if you keep it consistent, you have better results. So then you have six and a half inch door speakers, and then I got some 10 inch subs, and I already had the subwoofer box, as you can see in the video. And then you want to buy one of these like radio install kits, and that came with the converter that plugged into the original wiring harness. And usually these are kind of, I don't know, you kind of have to make them work, figure them out. The instructions aren't great, but usually there's a way to, you know, adapt them to your specific head unit and make it work. So. You'll see in the video how I kind of did it, and this one seemed to work okay. And then I got this Planet Audio, and what you want to do is kind of match the RMS of the um, subwoofers to the RMS of the amplifier. What they do is put the max wattage that the amplifier can reach, but usually RMS is kind of like an average that it can consistently maintain as an um, amplifier. And then as a subwoofer, what it can consistently take. So you want to make sure to kind of make them close so you can't, you know, blow up your subwoofers if you cr accidentally crank it up too high. And then what I did is I got some, like, building wire for, to run, um, you know, for the amplifier. But what I recommend doing is kind of, you know, getting an idea of you know, how long of wire you need, and then maybe buying some like welding cable. It's nice and flexible and easier to run than what I bought. So yeah, that's kind of the stereo, you know, installation um, kit that I kind of put together. And it worked really good on this sound system. So if you have a prelude and go with something like that, then, or with something like this, then you'll have really good results. All right, you already know what's about to go down. So we got two 10-inch subs. I went with Pioneer for these, but I did get this uh, Walmart brand Planet Audio amplifier. 
So I'm pretty confident this is gonna freaking slap because we got two 10 inch subs, two six and a halfs in the door, and then six by nines in the back um, tray. And I think that is gonna be plenty for this little car. You know, it definitely doesn't have that big of a cabin. So I think it's gonna definitely fill it, fill it with quite a bit of a noise, you know? So to install these subwoofers, I did buy a kit off eBay. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter what kit you buy because they're all basically the same. They're freaking, you know, just some heavy duty wire, RCA cables, and then a, um, you know, remote wire that turns on when your ignition is on. And then you have a fuse, and then it gives you a bunch of connectors that are junk. So you're probably going to use something better anyways. So basically you're just getting it for the wire. And then um, I also bought, this is a blue, just Blu-ray. You know, in my opinion, no one ever listens to CDs anymore, at least my generation. So all you need is either Bluetooth or, you know, this USB con connection so you can plug in. And then I got a kit that allows you to, you know, attach that, the uh, head unit to the actual car itself. And then there's usually, yeah, you can see a couple provisions for some screws. And they're usually pretty straightforward to install, but I'll definitely gonna go through it and give you guys some explanations all right full disclosure i definitely bought the wrong size subwoofer harness kit um this is like eight gauge which is not enough i'm going to be running probably around 500 to 1000 rms and they say you need at least two gauge or excuse me four gauge wire so i'm going to run up to the local hardware store grab some wire and then um get back to working on this all right, I got what I needed from the store. So this head kind of likes membling on it, this subwoofer box. Like you can kind of see remnants of it there. I didn't really like it. So I'm gonna take a piece of carpet and cover this area, staple it all up and put some glue on it right now. It didn't come out perfect but i think that'll do i'm definitely not too worried about this because i got it for free so i just want kind of functionality out of it it's also going to be in the trunk so you never see it all right subs came out real nice definitely look good in there i'm gonna get um the amplifier in the back now so pretty simple just four little uh screws on there all right picking back up where i left off on the wiring ordeal you know i got the wrong wire I got this at the local hardware store and this is like building wire it's like it was like 25 percent cheaper and i think as long as you aren't making like really hard corners you can use it and i'm not going to be you know doing anything too sharp so i'm going to use it and what i'm doing here taking this wire putting it right to this hot side of the battery cable or of the battery connection i'll be putting it under this nut and then routing it on here I took this fuse panel out and let me grab the light. I'm using this little grommet or it's like a grommet for the wiring bundle. I just made a little slit with it with, with a razor or in it with a razor blade. And then I put the wire through there and I think that'll do. 
So and then I'll run it up and then put it to this one and then it'll be nice and clean looking. So that's what I'm working on coming along. All right, so a little update before I call it a day. We got this guy routed and mounted up. That would be the, the wire for the subwoofer. That freaking wire looks pretty heavy. So that'll do. I still gotta kind of run it in the car. You can see I'll probably put it under that, you know, that piece of carpet and then we got it routed to the back and then I'll be making a ground wire as well. So um, I don't know if I showed you, but I got amplifier on the back of this guy. So that's kind of ready to go in. And I've been working on mounting this speaker. And this, I'm like, oh, it's gonna be easy to put these speakers in, but it turns out you to put any good speakers in these, you basically have to cut out this, I don't know, I can show you on the other side, like there's like a cage for it in there. And you have to cut it out, you can see it on the ground. And then, you know, kind of get it mounted in there. So I got that done, moving on to the other side. All right, so I'm back on another weekend. So I feel like this freaking piece of cardboard wood thing is kind of flimsy. So I'm gonna take that guy over there, this piece of plywood, and then cut it to fit this section in here, you know, to kind of fit this space. And then, um, you know, use this, this jigsaw to kind of cut out the geometry. So I'm gonna work on that now. So then I have a nice platform to set my subs on and make some ang angle brackets for them and then get them installed and, and ran and spare tire back in and all that fun stuff. All right, I got a little diagram made to map out this thing. Got it all marked up and I got the friggin' skill saw out here ready to cut her up. So I'm gonna get to work. All right, didn't come out perfect. What I'm gonna do is probably weld some uh, like bolts, just carriage bolts to the ground and then put some wig nuts on this thing so it doesn't fly back and forth and make noise. But uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. I thought it was 48 in the back and that's how wide the board was. But then all the dimensions got kind of screwed up up here. But I'm honestly, I don't think I could have gotten much larger thing in this like trunk space. So I think it might've been for the best. That'll do. All right, out with the old and in with the new. These new Pioneer speakers look pretty sweet. I do have to do some like weird wiring because this thing had like an acoustic feedback system it's called. And you kind of have to eliminate it to get these speakers to work correctly. All right, so I got this stereo mounted up to this bracketry. It doesn't fit like perfectly. It's kind of a little inset in the dash, but I think it'll work for now. And what I'm working on now is taking this converter that plugs into the, you know, the stock stereo plug-in and then wiring it to here. And all you have to do is follow this diagram that comes with your stereo and just make sure to match up, right, front left speaker, the white and black on this one that came with the stereo with the one, right, this one's front left and then left front white black so they do kind of correspond usually so the right the white will go to the white and that should do it so i'm gonna get to work on that and then also you want to make sure that your 12 volt like you have an ignition and that's usually your yellow but it looks like on this one the yellow is for the memory and then here yellow is oh yeah that should that should that should work because it's constant and that's usually in the memory for your stereo so I'm gonna get to work on that. All right, we got those subs wired up, nice and tidy, looks good. And I also got this thing put together. So all these are gonna be um, necessary to get this thing going, you know, for the front, front and rear speakers. Then I also have this cable that's gonna activate the sub or the sub amplifier. So that runs at the back of the car with the RCA cables. That'll come out the back of the head unit, then power this thing up. All right, I made a lot of progress. So I got this head unit in there, got the um, RCA cable, remote cable, and uh, you know, subwoofer control ran and mounted. So that came out good. I also got this speaker in. So I'll show you in another little clip how, to, how I did it because I had to cut out kind of the speaker ring for the stock speakers and that was kind of a process, but we got her done. 
and then got all this mounted and it's pretty much done and it works so i'm happy about that i guess i'll i'll give a little little demo of it working it works pretty pretty good so yeah i'm fired up all right so to get this door speaker mounted you got to basically cut out this piece of plastic so then you have more space behind it and then i'm gonna kind of trim the speaker a little bit and then drill some new holes and then you mount it up and splice her in there pretty straightforward but definitely a little bit of work so as you can see i cut out quite a bit of this edge area and then it kind of it fits in here pretty much like a glove so you definitely have to do that if you're going to mount some pioneer six and a halfs in these prelude door panels so if you're doing that that's what you got to do say joe oh it's the champagne pouring Making this video definitely has me a little bit nostalgic and bummed out that I sold the car, but um, we move forward. So yeah, basically you're going to put those 6x9 speakers, it's just four, bolt, four bolts per speakers, wire them in, and then um, put the covers back on the doors, put all the interior back in, and then you're ready to rock and roll. You're ready to listen to some EDM, listen to some rap music, and... You know, those Pioneer and different head units, Kenwood or whatnot, they have lots of adjustability, so that's definitely one um, added plus compared to a stock head unit or, you know, a tape deck with a um, converter in there that plugs into your phone. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this Casper build. We're going to be moving on to a car named Stu, and that'll be maybe a video or two in the future. So. Look forward to that, and thank you for watching. Hey, thanks for stopping into the Bluebird Enterprises YouTube channel. If you like what you saw, give me a big thumbs up, and hopefully you're leaving with a bigger smile than you came in with.